Okay, helping with reading. Oh, the process is a little, there's more to it in some ways than helping with writing. You often start with a word study, uh, then you get them to think before they read, you do pre-reading thinking. Then you do the reading and there's lots of different ways that you can do that. And there's lots of different, several different ways that you can support people while they're reading. And after that, you've got pre uh, post-reading thinking uh, and interpretation of the reading, what it meant, comprehension. So, starting with word study, get them to scan for the words. And if you think that they're reading every word, ask them to go backwards because um, they can't really read every word if they go backwards. Uh, get them to underline the words if you can. If, they, if they've got a photocopy, get them to underline the words that they are not sure about and discuss those. Ideally, they will have a copy and a hard copy. Um, is, Lots of ways that you can do that. You can get them to, if they've got their own local paper, you can get their local paper online most of the time now. Uh, or you can post material ahead of time to them. And if they read it ahead of time, then that's their option. If you can discuss with them whether you want them to just wait till the day to open it or whether I mean, they're still practicing reading. If they read it before you, they read it to you, um, and they've practiced it, hey, they're reading, so you can't really complain about that. The The main thing is for them to underline any words they're uncertain of, uh, talk about those. You're really talking about vocab, but if there's an obviously really good spelling lesson in there, like shun words, that, you know, um, talk about those too. Keep a record of these words, and you can revise them or review them uh, the following week or the following day, whatever. Um, and then sometimes on a really on a day where the student is low energy, you could just do revision. And so if you've got those words recorded, then you can um, put them on a screen in front of them or talk about them if you're just on the phone or send them by text or whatever. Uh, whatever method that you are using, you can help the students review the words. Sometimes people have a support person and they can email the review words to the support person who will print them out for the student. Pre-reading thinking, read the title, skim the pictures and diagrams and then say what do you think it's going to be about. And this is quite good for teaching speed reading as well. A lot of the time if people read the beginning, the beginning, of, the beginning paragraph, the first sentence of every uh, paragraph and the end of the para, end, uh, summary paragraph, uh, they will have a good idea about what the content is. Uh, and teaching students that as pre-reading is, is thinking is quite good. You might also ask them for their opinion about it. 
well, just what do they think it's going to be about? But, you know, again, us, some of our students will say things like, nobody has ever asked me what I think before, nobody's ever valued what I think. Some of our students have quite tough lives. Then do the reading. Now, you can ask the reader to let, read out loud to you. Um, you can read out loud with the learner if they are too embarrassed to read by themselves. You can read a paragraph, then the student can read a paragraph, and that gives them a break, and it also gives them a good model because they're hearing you read. So they're hearing the fluency, and they're hearing... Uh, and you, you can sort of um, strategically grab the paragraphs where the words are too hard for the student and therefore read something that's a little bit harder sometimes. You can get the learner to read silently, probably one paragraph at a time, and then you ask them a question about what they've read so that you know that they're getting meaning out of it and there's not just silence on the end of the phone. Uh, on a, frankly, that doesn't work so well when you're on the phone. It's better to just get them to read out loud. But it can be quite a good thing to do if you're in in person next to someone. You uh, can read the material to the student. If it's too hard for them, you can read the material to the student. Then you can get them to tell you in their own words what it's about, and you can write that down, and that can be their new reading material. Uh, and that's called context support. Don't ask me why. The kind of things that you can do while the student is reading Uh, there's something called pause prompt praise. Uh, pausing is just the ability that few of us have to be quiet uh, and say nothing. So if it's just so important that they've actually included it in the strategy. It, um, often we talk too soon and people need thinking time. When they're quiet, it doesn't mean they're just sitting there struggling can mean that they're trying to figure it out it can mean that they're struggling and as you get to know your student you'll know which one it is uh, but if in doubt just wait and if you can't bear that then start prompting what's it sounds what's the beginning sound what's the end sound um what word would fit in there if you read to the end of the sentence and tell then have another go then um, praise. Now praise is best done by describing what happened. You you went to the end of the, you don't say well done good boy, uh, not with adults and not with people that feel lousy about their learning and their skills. That sounds patronising and um, so often describing the behaviour, you read, I noticed that the next time you got that word or uh, and, and if you've got a bad memory like me, write it down on the bit of, while you're listening, write it down so you don't forget. Uh, so that you can go back and you can give good praise at the end, when they're finished writing again. Uh, at the time, you might say, mm, mm-hmm, um, or okay, whatever it is, just little um, encouragers to, so that you don't interrupt what their process is. Uh, but afterwards, give that praise. I noticed that 
this time you didn't keep reading through the full stop, you stopped at the right place. And although, you know, I noticed that, I thought it was quite good the way that you just kept reading and then you went back and you were able to sound out that word. Well, those kind of things are praise. Uh, and they make people feel a lot better than just empty, you know, oh, you're getting, you've improved so much. Some of that is good. Some of, you know, I think you've improved a lot. But if you can back it up with facts, it'll be more effective and more believed. Word attack strategies, I've kind of mentioned them already, some of them. You can use picture clues. Look at the picture. Are there things in the pictures that might might make sense in the sentence? Um, sound out the word. Uh, look at parts of words you know. Read each part by itself, then blend them together. That's sounding out. Can connect it, connect it to a word you know. Think of a word that looks like that word. Oh, you know the word correct. Oh, and that's correction. Um, something like that. Sometimes just starting again. Sometimes people, uh, you can hear, see people suddenly stop on a simple word. And what they've done is their eyes have gone a bit ahead and they've seen there's a hard word that they don't know and they stop. So sometimes just starting again, knowing that they're coming up to that will help. Sometimes talking about that hard word first and then going back and reading again. But I mean, they may decode that hard word, but they've lost all sense of the meaning, which is why it's quite good to go back and read the whole sentence again once they've figured out that word. That's called rerunning. <laughs> Uh, using prior knowledge, think about what you know about the text. Do you know anything that might make sense in the sentence? Read the sentence with that word to see if it makes sense. Post reading thinking. Um, questions. Were your questions answered? What was the main idea in the text? Uh, can you retell it or summarise it for me? Uh, you can look back in the text to do that if you want to. It's not a memory test. Uh, what kind of style is used? Um, is it horoscopes or real estate agents or is it storytelling? They can only really handle one genre or style. Um, and other styles throw them a bit, so um, discuss it, bring it out in the open. Um, relate it to life's experience. Have you, can you relate to the text? Have you had similar experiences? Do you agree or disagree if it's an opinion piece? Talking about all sorts of other things, and it can be quite interesting things that the student brings up. Write those down because they might be a good writing topic another time. And when the student says, oh, I don't know what to write about, if you've just taken, written a note down on the bottom right or bottom left of your um, teaching notes, you can flick through them and come up with ideas. It's interested in. Okay, some tips in general. Don't help too quickly. Give people time to work things out. Suggest strategies or give clues rather than just giving answers. However, if a person is new, 
and especially if they're new and in a group, or if they're tired and starting to make mistakes, or if they're reading material that's too difficult, then it's better to quietly give them most of the words and leave them to sound out the words that will just stretch them a little bit. Anytime someone starts off well and starts making mistakes, there's a good chance they're getting tired. Remind them that that's probably what's happening so they don't start that one dumb, I can't do this, I never can do this stuff in their head. Now, something really, really important that people often don't, under, don't they somehow miss it. Often when we're enthusiastic or excited about something, we raise our voices. Now, sometimes if you're doing that with a literacy student, it sounds like you're yelling and impatient. So slow your voice down and keep the volume down. That does matter. Uh, loud, fast voices sound critical and impatient when really it's just that we're trying to be helpful and to give help as fast as we can. Um, the other thing is that you don't have to give if, give your student everything all on the same day. Just a little bit every day is water dripping on stone. That's what makes the difference. It's easy to feel like we're not doing enough. It's surprising how a little bit can make a big difference. 